Everybody, if you haven't got sound, you haven't turned sound on. That's fine. Someone else has never got sound, but there is sound. Everything has sound. You can hear me, can't you? Hello. Yeah, it's fine. Someone said no sound on the on the stream. They were wrong. Okay. I hope every camera needs you to be pressing record. As this will be produced as a TV show on Motus TV at some point in the near future. But more importantly, it's a live stream right now. I'd like to thank Phil Mortstead on camera two. I'd like to thank Frank McKinnon on camera one. I'd like to thank Matt McCallum on the cutting. I'm Nick Damon. We're RC Racing TV and help from Neobuggy.net. F for official media partners. And it's a 2016 EFRA 1.8 IC Buggy European Championship final. Let's go! Like wobble on the line from Bataille, but they get up in one, two, three, four, five, six order. No accidents so far to speak of. We're with the front two. And this may be something we're doing a lot of. It's Ronnefelk from Boots. They go down the roller coaster the first time. Ronnefelk just stretching out the lead a bit. It's still Ronnefelk, Boots, and then Bataille. Take it very care the first couple of laps because this is where things can go horribly wrong. And Boots is already a little bit wild in the first couple. As he said, he had grip roll with his new tyres. That's the thing you normally hear about on 12th cars. But Ronnefelt, great start, getting away. Boots will be trying to put him in and Battle staying with him and running with a harder compound tyre. So that's a great first lap for Ronnefelt. It's four, it is one, two, three, four, five. So it's on Gar in fourth, Valanca in fifth. Then Craig, then Brian Baldo. So it's pretty much gone off in grid order. So much so that right at the back, It's Oscar Balder, actually. Balder, Oscar Balder, a bit bizarre. So, 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 off we go. Now, Ronnefelt comes around for the second time onto the roller coaster. Boots is about a second behind him and Battle a second behind him. The three, really, the three best drivers of the last 10 years in this class in Europe are battling away in the first couple of minutes of the 2016 European final. And hopefully, they're battling in the next 45. Not sure if we're going to get varied fuel strategies as last time because of the length of the track makes doing clever things more difficult. Ronnefalk leading, boot second and battle third. And my guess is that those are pretty, yeah, slightly faster for Ronnefalk again. And slightly slower for battle, but really in the scheme of things, they're all just building themselves some room. So Ronnefalk for the TKR kink right now, boots behind him. Flying up, not really breaking traction. Boots almost sitting as second or so behind you see Formula One car so they don't get too much aero wear and what's happened in the last couple of corners is suddenly Boots moved a little bit close to Ronnefelt and after a bad bit of drive Battle has moved a bit of it back, back off the two so suddenly it becomes much more of a two-man event as we turn oh gosh the second minute of the 45 is Eddie and already much as we've seen many times before Ronnefelt leads out and Boots is following him down now the cars will change a lot during the 45 minutes final the track will change a lot to the 45 minute final. It'll be more consistent probably than some, but because it's got so much wear already on it. The question is, will we get the wind again blowing the guys off? Will we get different pit stop strategies affecting the overall run? Will we have to start factoring in who's got a stop in hand and who hasn't? Can't answer those questions, but it's a 53-2 for Ronnefelk, a 53-4 for uh, Boot, and a 54-2 for Bataille. So Bataille did drop off a little bit there. And in fact, Boot, I don't think, has done a fast lap in any of the first three laps. He's been slower than Ronnefelk in all of the first three laps. Ronnefelk. Wants his championship back. Boots took his championship last year in the Ongara Ring. The championship for two years in a row. Firstly in Reims and secondly in Sands. So in France and Germany it was won by Ronnefeld. Then in Italy it was won by Boots. And now we have part four of the battle here in Spain. Bataille getting a bit closer. So he's definitely getting stretched at the front. And definitely you're seeing that Ronnefeld is beginning to just ease away. But... Just a little bit uh, slow going around the patio section there. Boots also is being slightly caught by um, Bataille. Let's, let's shift our focus to Boots for a while. So Boots now in second place. He's kind of in the he's the uh, meat in the sandwich, really. I think Bataille is trying to realise he can't let these guys get away. Just behind them now in fourth place is Neil Cragg in car six. So that's some great work by Craggy. So he's come through to fourth. And behind him, it is Brian Baldo in fifth. But very much the confidence, the, the concentration we have to have is on these top three as they go in the bottom of the circuit. Evenly spread out. No one really attacking anybody at the moment. But Boots now getting a little bit of a hurry up, it seems. You know, I need to start thinking. I've, I've, I've worked my tyres and I've worked myself in. And he's so quick down that hill. He's so quick down the hill away from the patio section. 
that time round. Runner foul 53-7, 53-6 for Boots and nothing much in it really. Tenth for second either way. Boots needs to find three or four tenths over the next couple of laps. We are now four and a half minutes in, a couple of laps away from the first pit stop. So that's three laps. We're in to see whether Runner foul is going to stretch it an extra lap, an extra lap from Boots. And if he does, whether it'll actually buy him an extra pit stop. So I'm not even sure it will at this track, it's so large. Down the carousel, Boots in second place, just ahead of him by a... Well, the gaps currently at the last lap was about 1.3 seconds is Ronnefalk, and he's about equidistant ahead of Bataille, who's about 1.3 seconds back, and a little bit of a mistake by Ronnefalk just above us, but it's only about a one or two tenths of a second mistake, and I'd say at this lap now it's on as even, because I think Ronnefalk has stretched it slightly during a free was fault, and the interesting thing is so far, neither or none of these top three guards has made a mistake. Obviously a more forgiving circuit. Last year's race on Garwin saw a lot of bounces and, and difficult jumps. Here they're all running as clean as they can. That last lap round was a 52-8 against a 53-2. So yeah, Runafout really is stretching. Four tenths in that one. Battle a 53 flat. So it's Boots really who's kind of lacking the speed at the moment. If he goes up on two wheels, but gets away with it. So you'd say that Boots is the one who's slightly struggling. Oh, Runafout makes quite a nasty hash of the land and makes a mistake that's going to cost him half to three quarters of a second. So a lot of this good work of the last couple has been undone by one poor landing and Boots will get a lot of encouragement from that because really on ground speed Ronner Falk in the green and yellow car is looking faster than the all rev machine of Boots. And so much so that even after that mistake you have to say Ronner Falk is only is still as far ahead as he was two laps ago. Ronner Falk goes round in a 53-7 53-3 yeah it's a, it's four tenths game back but you kind of feel that Ronnefart can dip into the 52s at ease whereas Boots really having more of an issue with staying out of the 53s still with Boots but if you want to open up sometimes we can see both cars it'd be great gaps about a second and a half just slightly too do have more than one frame most of the time we're coming down the hill everyone's still rolling there's no real problems first stops have happened so probably we'll see pit stops so these cars are stopping early because they're stopping earlier than Boots. They're stopping effectively on 6.40. So some of these cars are not even running 7.30, which is the next lap. So they really are uh, involving in fueling. Now I expect that Boots, who are with the moment, will stop. And the small mistake of Ronnefalk has brought them slightly closer to the second little tick. So Boots, that should be a small gain again. I expect Boots to stop this time. I'm really not sure if Ronnefalk will. Whether the Orion engine, which has traditionally been more economical than the Reds engine, no, they're both stopping, so we're not going to have a split strategy this year. The track is too large for that. Now, we saw in the semi-finals, and we see it again, that Ronnefeld is so much quicker in the refueling. And that is going to be absolutely key. The refueling partnership of Pierre Ronnefeld and uh, Adrian Bertie. In fact, no, if you look at it, look how close the battle is. It seems more that fueling that Kyosho is slower than either the Mugen behind him now of Bataille, or more importantly, the HB ahead of him of Ronnefeld. So a stick with the second and third, which is now a battle. Ronnef battle gained himself two seconds again, or a second and a half during that pit stop. And it's going to be... I um, just don't hope that it isn't what decides it, because you don't want to have people looking at not winning a European champion staring at their pit crew, going, guys, we just weren't quick enough. So eight minutes down, and it's... Boots and Battle. Let's just have a quick a bit of a focus on the battle now in third, trying to catch up. Ronna felt very happily in the lead at the moment. Well, a huge amount of liberties taken with that curb there by Robert. But he does look to be uh, a little bit more happy now in this second phase. Nicely spread the thing, skid the thing down the U, and now onto the roller coaster section. That's the third part of it. Visually, I'd say that Boots has been slightly quicker this lap than Battle, but it's his problem is that he's not really gaining on Ronnefalk. And Ronnefalk is a good... With that two second or so gain during the pit stop, Ronnefalk goes round in a 53-1. Boots goes round in a 53 flat, as does Battle, but the gap between them is now nearly four seconds, and that was virtually all in the pit stop. And there's still four more of those to come. And they were slower in all the pit stops during the uh, semi as well. So you kind of think that Bataille, if he can stay close to Boots for the rest of this set next seven minutes, we'll probably get him in the pit stops. 
But Ronafout leading. He hasn't run away with it like he did at the sand a couple of years ago, but uh, three years ago, but he is eking a lead. This lead is four seconds nearly. No one really making any mistakes, which is obviously a sign we're in the A final and everyone is a, a great drive. But also, I think about the level of the pushing. Just to remind you, it's Neil Crack in fourth, and it is Oscar Baldo in fifth. I think it's. Uh, Brian Bell is it's Bloomfield in fifth, apparently. So Bloomfield's come through the fifth with his uh, miracle concept. So I'm sorry, I've, I've, I've Bloomfield, who suddenly found his place again with his new concept of car. And everyone's over here. Let's uh, drop back to Neil Craig and Bloomfield, who are coming at the main straight now. They'll be through the TKR kink. That's Craig in fourth. And there's a the fifth place of Bloomfield from 12. So Bloomfield trying something completely different in this race. He knew he had no chance. I'll keep an eye on the top three. and something changes, I'll tell you. But Bloomfield... You know, not out of it. He's a long way back, but he's not out of it. And he's fought his way quite effectively up through the rest of the field from 12 to 5th. And now he's trying to take on his fellow bit of crags. So there's three Brits in the top five, but the leader is a Swede. And Bloomfield seems to be man on the move at the moment. He's certainly beginning to pick up and look at Crags' backside. And this is the battle, the battle for four. One, two, and three, not massive gains. I think Boots may have gained a bit, but just lost it on a bit of a corner. But now they kind of start to finish. Bloomfield's going to want to get round and past the associations of Crag with his Agama. And I, ooh, Crag blocking him at this point. You're quite allowed to. This is the final. You haven't got to let anyone through. But Bloomfield, he's done something to find his car to move forward like this. He got only to the TKR kick. One, two, and three, still pretty much the same. The lead is 3.3 seconds. So actually slightly faster than that last lap. Oh, what's going on there? And there goes Bloomfield. Should never look at a time screen because through goes Bloomfield. We've got that one, Matt. So carry on going. So Bloomfield now gets moving. And he now will start to try and reel in the very large gap that there is between himself and Robert Bataille in third. So let's now move forward to Elliot Boots again. He's about to go across time in scoring now in the all-red car. He is in second with third behind him is Bataille. Bataille 52-8, Boots 2-9 and a 52-4 for Ronnefeld who eases out his lead to just shy of four seconds. We are now at uh, 12 minutes, so we're about two minutes away from the next round of pit stops. Your next question is whether if Battle can get past Boots at the next set of stops, which you would think he would have a good chance of doing, because he's getting very close now. Battle now getting very racy. Boots makes a slight mistake going up, and Battle unfortunately puts too much power on, but Battle suddenly all over the back of Boots, and then Boots is no, you're not, and just gets a little stretch his legs very slightly. Second place, the red car of Elliot Boots. Third place, the uh, orange into yellow machine of Robert Bataille. Kyosha from Mugen. And that time round, it was a 53-6 against a 53-6 against a 53-0. So the front two do 53 zeros. Sixes and a 50 zero for Robert for, uh, Tice. He was the fastest on that lap. Coming at 13 minutes gone, which means there's still 32 to go. And what is a, a massively intriguing final because no one's really getting any away. And we're, still, we're really into a, a game of chess here as Boots tries to, to, to cut down this four second lead that Ronathalk has, but probably in his heart of hearts knows he's going to lose another two seconds at the pit stops. Marco Bruffo, and already coming into lapping cars is... Our, oh, and Boots made a mistake, and that's through. Through goes Bataille. So Bataille gets second after a mile second Boots, and now he's the one who has to go and chase Ronafak. He just, just had to deal with some traffic. So let's see if that's going to roll again on the VRC Pro replay. Boots comes in and just makes a little mistake, bounces off, and suddenly we have a new... Second place. Oh, Ronald Phelps had an accident. So Ronald Phelps has been cut right, fallen into the, the traffic. The traffic needs to get out of the way and get out of the way good because it's held up Ronald Phelps a little bit. Not too bad. I think it was Baruffalo actually who held him up most there. But we are looking at the moment. We're with um, Robert Bataille who's now much, much, much closer to Ronald Phelps. He's got past um, Boots. And Ronald Phelps will have lost a couple of seconds and a, and a problem with Baruffalo who needs to get out of the way of the leaders. And I think really the referee basically just said to just park it and let the next two through. And he has said that to 10. So Baruffalo, he's been called again and now he's let him through. 
and the gap has visibly come down as Batai begins to, and Ronathout comes in for fuel. Now is Batai coming well? So it's a fuel, fuel, fuel situation. Brilliantly fast stop. And a slower stop again. So off goes Boots, dropping back again through the pit stops. And we are now, that pit stop is a 14 and a half. So we'll stick with Batai as he comes out the pits, but Boots, he's losing two seconds each pit stop. You can't do that at international level. I don't know what, what's gone wrong, what the problem with the filling is. He's got two very experienced men doing it. So Bloomfield's gone back into fifth and Craig's back in fourth. And another lap edge to come for Batai and he's to lap. For some reason he's behind the 10 again, that happened there. Oh, he's upside down! And into the lead goes Batai! Batai takes the lead! Oh, Ronnefeld just lost it on the corner and suddenly Robert Batai is in the lead! He's our leader! So the first mistake has proved absolutely crucial and more importantly it's thrown Ronnefeld back towards Boots! Oh, that traffic must have slightly broken the conversation, concentration of Sweden. We now have a Spaniard leading in Spain. Let's see that one again. With our VRC Pro, it comes in round the corner. Oh, rolls it. And suddenly, just round the bottom there. Brilliant move there. So opportunities, so problems with Ronafat, but that means that Bataille is leading. Ronafat, let's switch our attention to Ronafat. We'll be chasing him down now. So Ronafat, there's on the bottom of the truck. He's got a, only a small gap from Boots, but now Bataille leads. And we are 15 metres, a third of the way down. There's two thirds more of this game of automotive chess to come. Ronafalk now needs to make up the gap he lost. Last time round it was three seconds he blew, but he now needs to catch up. Oh, a bit of a tank slap of a battle. You're going to see, I think, Ronafalk now try and open his wheels and show his class. He really looks to push down and start putting pressure on the former world champion, the 2012 champion in Argentina. Also, the, I think, the 2011 European champion, Robert Bataille. But the 2013-2014 European champion, Dave Ronald Fuckerson, is coming to get you. So it's Bataille and the orange and yellow car coming towards us. And oh, he's rolled again! And now the battle is second and third. So let's stay with Ronald Falk as a second mistake. When he was catching, but now Boots can see Ronald Falk. Can, can Boots, who's looked a bit of a shadow of his uh, qualifying self in this final, I mean, obviously still going very fast because he's still in third. But he's now going to put some pressure on uh, Ronald Falk. Ronald Falk needs to get his head to go. It's very hot. How do you get your concentration back? But Bataille is away. He's not the fastest. You kind of feel if one of these two can sort out their problems, Bruce's problem is pit stops. Ronafout's problems all, oh, it's more than that now because he's got a massive tank slap where they begin to push. So Ronafout, who lost a chunk of time, two laps in a row. Let's see that one again. It's a dancing moment for our friend on the TKR replay. Just comes up, dances around and it doesn't quite work for him. But it is Bataille leading, and we're still following Ronafelt because he's the man most likely to do something one way or the other. Bataille, I'll give you the gap when they come round in a second. And the gap as Bataille does a 53-7. Ronafelt does a 52-8, and the gap has come down to 1.2 point. Is it 2 point? Yeah, 2.6 seconds. But Ronafelt appears to be able to go half a second faster if he wants to, uh, if he's not crashing. Boots is not out of this by any means. He needs to find a little bit of a second wind. He's only five seconds off the lead. Still in fourth, but back to fourth again has gone Bloomfield. Crag in fifth. Now a little personal British battle for fourth and fifth. But we're watching the, uh, the main battle for the European Championship as we go past 18 minutes, not past 20, even 20 minutes, not halfway yet. And Ronafalk trips across the... Like fantastic almost. He trips across the uh, podium. Onto the driveway. Now that time round it was a 53-4, plays a 52-6. So Ronafelt picked up 0.8 of a second. So Ronafelt, he's got the ground speed. He's still dragging boots with him up. 52-6 as well. I thought it was 52-4, not 53-4. Sorry. Actually, battle was just as fast that time round. Sorry. I, I, uh, the battle, they've all dropped in the 52s. They're all up their pace. Bataille sensing a home win in the Euros. Probably to go to France's home win in the Euros on a Sunday. 
So one, two and three, after 20 minutes of racing, are separated by about five seconds. That's as, really as much as you can hope for in any major, Euro major racing event because that's less than one mistake. So one rollover and it's all, it's all changed. Boots, I'd say, is coming back towards Ronnefeld. The only problem is we've got our pit stop coming up in a minute. I'd say that Ronnefeld are the fastest stops. Uh, but I slightly slower and Boots is a lot slower for some reason. I don't know why. That lap round was Bataille 52.7, 52.9 for Ronnefeld, 52.3 for Boots. So Ronnefeld, as Boots is absolutely hanging out there and it's costing us a timer every now and again. But leading from the front. So he's been leading now for the past five minutes almost. But we are getting close to the next set of, three minutes down to the next set of stops will be in the next lap and a half or so. And they have stopped, so I kind of think they'll be coming in this lap or the next. Will they come in this time? Where's Ronnefalk? This lap or the next, will they start to diverge after three runs? Or will they come in? It looks like everyone's kind of waiting. There's a kind of a, an anticipation in all the pit crews, and in comes Bataille. In comes Ronnefalk. Bataille fuels all. Ronnefalk not twice. I think Ronnefalk. Oh, that boot has got an extra lap. Boot has got an extra lap. I'm not sure whether that's just try and get a bit of a. I'm not sure why he's done that. He won't be able to save a pit stop, that's for sure. Perhaps he just feels he's got to save his short fuel. If he can short fuel one stop at the end. But we're now, for the first time, we're off programme. Boots has gone an extra lap this time. Let's have our focus on Boots now, the red car, just going up the hill. See what he does. Let's see what happens when he comes out. I'm sure he'll drop back to third again. But he has effectively come out, sat in front of the lead. He'll lead a lap, as long as he doesn't ruin it the next couple of corners. And he's just done something slightly different for the first time here. And he goes, whoa, that's the end of the day. You don't want to do that. That's almost like a braking problem. So Boots just kept on going. I'm sure it happened there. Very strange error. And that's going to put him way down. because He's a few seconds behind Bataille. And he's now got a pit stop to have. He's watching the pit stop. Still not quick. And he's still got problems. Getting that car off the pit lane is going to be the uh, the end of his championship challenge. Let's go back to our leader who's having the bottom of the uh, roller coaster. Just to give you the other positions, it's Bataille who is leading by uh, 1.8 seconds last time round. Second is Boots. Sorry, second is Ronnefelt now, sorry. Third is Boots. Bloomfield fourth, Crag fifth. And the gap, effectively, now is when Bataille crosses the line and now is when Ronnefeld. And Boots has got an awful lot of time to make up after the mistake he made on his inland. Even like, Car 5 is even later, so there is a few people who are trying a little bit of a, uh, a short field, a, a long field strategy. As we just click to halfway, just got over halfway, Robert Bataille has a lead of two and a half seconds. 2.2 seconds. So it's 2.2 seconds for Ty's leading. And Ronnefer, that's half a race is about catching that up. Boots is just off the back of it at the moment. Yannick Igon has got himself up to fourth ahead of Bloomfield. That's a good result for the Frenchman, looking for a top five. They come round again. Across the line goes. Bataille, 52.9, 2.4 for Ronnefeld. Ronnefeld picked up half a second on the Spaniard in that one. Of course, there's a lot less laps to catch up in because each lap is so long. The half a second a lap takes you four minutes to catch up a two-second lead. And you have to get it right. And the other person has to go slower the whole time through the X-ray switchback. Down the U, Ronnefeld and Boot. Let's, let's uh, move our focus back to Ronnefeld who's the coming man now as he goes down the roller coaster. Underneath Phil's position on the HBI rollers and then very quickly turns the whole thing through. Down he dives and he looks visually a little bit closer. There's a lot of foreshortening in certain parts of this track which can make it look a bit strange but I think Ronald Felt got a little bit closer that time round. As one of our, another one of our, our balloons burst in our hole. Yeah, 30, 53, 0, 52, 7. 
Just getting a little bit closer all the time. Boot. There they are, Ronnefelt. Just a little bit of a, a, a hiccup there that's going to slow him down and slow down his progress as he attempts to uh, get back towards Bataille. Now, obviously, the next major point is 28 minutes gone, which is in about three and a half minutes, which will be the next sort of 7.30 stop. 28 or nearer 30 probably want to stop at this time. But it does seem that they're having problems even doing seven and a half minutes on this track at the moment with the heat, having to run the cars a bit richer. Keep them cool. That time round, it was a 53-4, get to 56. Yeah, I thought one felt like lost a tiny bit of drive on the HBI rollers, but they, he can see him, you know. He's in the corner of his eye. If, 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 if they're racing full-scale cars, he can see him out the window very easily. And they're racing ready control cars, and he can see him in his corner of his eye. He, when he's looking at his track, he's looking far out of his car, he can see his target. Runner Falk has target acquired, which is Bataille, who is about one jump ahead of him as they go down the bottom. And certainly Runner Falk looks closer this time round, goes to the rollers. And Runner Falk's had a good lap so far. Gaining, 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 gaining on Bataille. Now, what we have to remember is these cars are going to go off. They're going to change. Bataille perhaps having a slight rest on that lap. But Bataille certainly seems to be closed down as Ronald Falk swoops off the uh, patio section. Oh, yeah, made a minute. he made a minor mistake there at the bottom of the U. And that's probably cost him a lot of the gain he made. It's just in such tiny portions there. Bataille, 53-4. It was a 53-0. So it was a 4 tenth game. It would be more without that slight mistake. But this is where he's got to be absolutely on the ragged edge to catch up. And then we've got a fuel stop where he might be able to par. Oh, two wheels up there. And they both take huge liberty with the, with the TKR. Two wheels for, for uh, battle. And they're now right back together again after 26 minutes. Ronnefuck sprints around and comes down the roller coaster. This time, Bataille, I think, got a better drive out the first part of it. And actually stretched very slightly the lead. Boots is kind of abandoned now, about five seconds or six seconds behind them. And he's got to hope for some sort of... Uh, luck-based miracle now to catch up again. He's sort of lost, lost contact during that third phase. But Bataille and Ronnefelk absolutely nailed together now, as you can see. There's car and there's traffic will start to play a corner to, to go around. And another lap is completed. And it is a 53-3. Gets a 52-7, so half a second gain. And at this point, I don't think I need to bother with gaps anymore because, as you can see, they are together. As they come in for fuel. Now, will it be a chance for an overtake? Oh, there's been a, a conflagration. I think that what's going to happen is... Uh, no, they go down together. They actually came together in the pit lane and they go out together. And that is another pit stop. They can start another seven minutes of battle. Boots has gone back to the previous strategy again. So he's really kind of uh, lost at the moment. But these two are fighting out for the league of the European Championship here. And we are just about 27 minutes down. And they're absolutely together. The red and yellow of Robert Bataille. The yellow, red and green. Oh, oh, and it's now getting to the point where you've got to be careful and hit some of Ronald Falk and they're absolutely together. Ronald Falk has the inside line going through the ripples, but no, and he just little tick there on the rear wheel, the red, the yellow rear wheels of Robert Bataille against the white wheels of Ronald Falk. Spain v Sweden. Oh, and Ronald Falk made a mistake. And that uh, shouldn't be applauded. Nice fielding rather than marshalling, but he got close. That's not the end of the world. Again, there's a slight kind of randomness to that section just after timing and scoring that kind of um, means you get a bad bounce. But what's happened is that's given a little bit of, bit of breathing room. They were right together. Now they stretch out again, but don't worry. We still have another 16 minutes of this. In an epic battle so far. And you kind of think now that... Right, that Ronald Falk is the coming man. He doesn't seem like he, he seems already to be trying to bridge that gap. Now, there's traffic coming up, and the referee is going to have to get them out of the way. But Ronald Falk, already to my visual eye, it, oh, and a slight mistake from Battle, he gets away with it. But what has happened, another mistake from Battle, so they're now really pushing, really pushing. The cars that aren't perfect anymore. And the gap has gone down to, wait, it was a 54 against a 54. He lost a second in that one, the Ronald Falk. The gap is pretty much getting to visual again as they come round. So Ronnefelt has the speed. So you kind of feel now that it has to be a defensive rear guard from Bataille. Whether you're going to keep Ronnefelt back for 17 minutes or 16 minutes, I've no idea. But you kind of feel he has to. But you just feel that there's about half a second extra in the car of Ronnefelt. But there was a nice drive there. And he looked pretty good. This Ronnefelt is very quick in that third section of the 
roller coaster and now they're back together again so we should be able to get them all in both in the same frame as they climb up the hill onto the patio and now they've got traffic and that must be a worry for battle and opportunity and that traffic decides to crash and has to wait in fact both pieces of traffic crash so the traffic they had was not a worry at all because they both threw themselves off the track and one of that slight tick there lost in a couple of tents but they are absolutely behind. Beautiful slide now by one of the he got around the patio section. Sorry, but the, the uh, driveway section. And they come on the main straight. They'll be firing up towards the uh, TKR kink now. Both of them in a little circus, but they now hop on again and looking towards the X-ray switchback. And they're going to drop down the U before they come back up. A beautiful sweeping corner into the roller coaster. And they're as close as you can get. Absolutely together. And Ronnefelk. Certainly trying to make something that you kind of think Runnefelt can bridge the gap. Now, is this because we have defensive driving from battle? Is he just playing it safe? Does he, is it, or is it because it's easier to follow than to lead? Is that just simply because you just can take more risks? And, when, and if he gets past, will the roles reverse? So many questions to be answered. And we only have 14 minutes and 44 seconds to answer them. As they come around and get another lap and they are absolutely together. One World Championship and three European Championship. Four, sorry, four European Championship in front of you there. Countless wins at many other meetings. And a bit wide, actually, when I thought it was also going to come in for fuel then, went so wide. But interesting, it didn't really cost him too much. As Ronnefuck hadn't really aged. Oh, they touched. And Ronnefuck has to watch, and he does. They go to the switchback. But lap after lap, they are closer and closer and closer. Boots not gaining too much, but not losing either. He's kind of sitting there, eight and nine, and then the battle's gone quite wide. And he kind of felt for a second there was a chance that Ronnefuck could dive in the inside of the HPI rollers. And they now come up the hill. More traffic ahead of them. Both take a white and a curved line in. They drop down off the patio. And the gap is six metres or so. It condenses down the slow facts to two or three metres. And another lap has caught by, and more importantly for Robert Bataille, another time has gone by. And we have 13 minutes and 40 seconds to go. I think we have still two fuel stops to go. And they are absolutely together in a race which I'm pretty certain if it carries on like this is going to be described as the epic of all ages. Two drivers at the absolutely top of their game which is particularly useful. We've got a world champion championships coming up in Las Vegas in a few months time. And we want to see a European in with a good chance in the Americans backyard. And certainly these two in any boots would be your bet. Completely different packages. Different engine, different chassis, different tyres. And obviously a different driver here. And oh, and it's a chance there. He's got a bad and suddenly Ronald Felt thinks he's got a chance. There's a bad bounce for Bataille on the ripples, but no. Don't forget it's the mainly green car, the green tailed car, which is which is Ronald Felt in second. And the red fronted car. Well these were yellow wheels and white wheels. Yellow wheels battle, white wheels Ronald Felt. So Bataille, who is also called Battle, I keep changing his name halfway through this thing, comes up the main straight. Almost like on a piece of elastic. They stretch as the acceleration, they condense as they break. Oh, he's going to... Oh! Got up the inside and rolled. And now we'll see whether he can catch up again. He was Effectively, it's a kind of a, almost in a 12th sucker punch. You go wide, make a mistake, and what happens is the other person comes in too tight and it either hits the barrier, which is what happens in 12th, or in that case, they roll. Now, Ronald Thuck, I don't think, will be at, utterly dismayed by that. Now, what is happening, though, is that Elliot Boots is beginning to bridge the gap. It's still a long gap, but he is beginning to bridge it as they almost hold each other up. Now, how quickly can Ronathart get back to these two? They'll be stopping for fuel again for the penultimate time quite soon. As we come now down to 11.50 to go. I think this is pit stop lap. The tie stops. Fueled. Out. And there's Ronnefalk as well. And they go away together. And there's, a, unfortunately, a back marker in the way. Let's stick with Ronnefalk. because he's got to deal with the back marker first. And he has very effectively because the back marker got out of the way. So Ronnefalk gained in that. Ronnefalk definitely gained through the, through the fuel station. Let's stay with Ronnefalk. You can probably get them both in frame, actually, as they come down the roller coaster section. Now, this third section is where Ronnefalk looks particularly good. He probably doesn't want that car behind him. So as they go through, Boots, obviously closer at the moment because they've gone through the fueling section. Running now down to 11 to go. So one more stop for both of them. But all of a sudden, Ronifer, that accident has been completely made up. And he's back on the tail again of Bataille. But the problem is, you've got to get past him. And Bataille is driving brilliantly. I've not seen Bataille actually roll the car yet. 
He stayed four wheels down the whole time. Now, obviously, if that didn't, will the tyres last those extra 11 minutes? His tyres went off in the semi final. And Batai once more. Oh, it's Batai made a mistake now, and that's going to be an absolute crucial thing. Because can, has he got the ground speed to catch Ronald Falkup? Let's see that one again on the VRC Pro replay. Just came in. Threw the kick, no problem there, but he came in, he hopped and he just landed his first mistake and landed, it was wrong all the way in the air and Ronnefelt takes the lead with 10 minutes to go and you kind of feel you've not seen within Basel the speed to catch up, but let's stick with Basel because he's really, really pushing. He's coming up now, Batai is about to go round the hairpin before the start finish right now and over the time he's scoring, he is pushing like heck to catch up and does Ronnefelt now go slower? Does Ronnefelt tighten up with 10 minutes to go? Oh no, and it's all going wrong for Batai as he tries to push. He's now got Boots right behind him. We've got a battle for second and third. Because Boots has come from nowhere with a very good quiet section. The second and third is back on. Our leader is away in Ronnefelt with 10 minutes to go. So second and third is where the battle is now. Oh, and he just clunks it. Oh, and battle's gone. Oh no, Batai has a problem. The engine has died. Oh, the luck, if, if he, the only luck that Batai has is bad luck. <coughs> and he is out. He may get going and get up over. That's it. I don't think there's anything to do with the, the contact. Let's see that again on the VRC Pro replay, what actually happened during that moment. They come in and know he's lost it. It's cut already. That's why the reason that Boots hit him was because the car had already cut. Oh, desperate. Oh, Runner Falk's gone! Runner Falk's gone as well! There's been a stall right in front of us. Runner Falk has gone. They've both stalled. What's the chances of that? It's Boots in the lead. Boots leads the European Championships. First and second dead. Boots in the lead as he goes underneath us now. Whoa! What's the chances? We just Runner Falk ground to a halt a lap after. Boots was getting quicker, but he was nowhere, and now he leads with just eight minutes to go. His lead is over Neil Craig as the British one too, but Craig is 19 seconds behind. But in this weather, can Boots keep going? Oh, I'm not sure if Ronald got going again or not, but oh dear, oh dear, it's all about Boots now as he comes down the patio and turns round. He's got a eight-minute victory run. I mean, Neil Craig's gonna be chuffed a bit with second if he stays there. Hmm? Oh dear, oh dear, Ronnefelt has retired. What bad luck. But, and Boomfield's now fourth. Igon's in third. What a great result for Yannick if he can hold there. But when your front two retire within half a lap of each other, that is the wonder of motor racing. That is why you never, and sport, you never leave a football match till the final whistle's gone. You never leave a motor race there. Everyone's past the checkered flag because anything can happen in sport. As Boots almost ruins his own chances there. But Boots is looking, and I don't want to tempt fate, at back-to-back -back European titles because he's kept his car going. And in the past, it's been Boots who's not kept his car going, and other people have won it. He, he, he crashed out spectacularly from the semi-final of the Worlds in Argentina when he was TQ. But here, Boots is leading. Boots has kept his head down as Igon moves into second place. He's kept his head down, 54-1. He's slowed it. He's, he's back. He's backed right off by a second lap because he's got a 26 second lead over second. He just has to get the thing to the end and he will be European champion for the second year in a row. But he has got one more pit stop. He's got one more area of risk, one more time when it can go wrong. He'll have his little cheeks will be clenched because of what happens if it stalls when you're in the pit stop. What happens if the same problems that befall Robert Batai, the same problems before David Runner felt before me? At this point, he just has to concentrate on driving because everything, anything that's going to stop him winning the European Championship is completely out of his control. Boots can drive the next 10 laps, well, almost with his eyes closed. That's all you need to do. But will the car stay together? Will the car stay together? Crag back into second, Bloomfield in third, Ergon in fourth. There's a bit of a battle going on there as they go through the fueling regime. So Boots, any second now, will be stopping for the second time, for the final time. As we have now lost, oh, Batai has, has gone again, so he's definitely got a problem. And then comes Boots' his final pit stop. All he has to do is keep the engine running. And that's what he's done. So that's the, uh, 
the next worrying part gone. At the bottom of the circuit, Boots. Well, with about uh, five, there's still five and a half minutes to go. Let's see if we can find our second place man, Neil Cragg. I think he's just about going down the uh, roller coaster section now. I think that's Cragg at the bottom of the uh, hill. And coming round the uh, HBI hairpin. So currently it's a British British one too, which you wouldn't have thought. That's not Craig. Okay, I've got the wrong car, have I? Where is Craig? Let me let me catch that properly this time. Where is Craig? Craig's at 78. Okay, so Craig is probably So it's actually Craig who is just going over the, uh, down the bottom of the straight there. He's going to come round the corner here. So on the main straight is Craig in second place. And comes in for his final fuel stop. Let's see how that affects the order. As the eight car of Igon goes through. Igon is actually now second. So Craig and Igon are fighting over the last position, of the two positions on the, on the podium. Bloomfield's in fourth. Let's try and move it one car forward to Igon. The Frenchman with the X-ray who's running second at the bottom of the roller coaster now. Let me tell you, Boots is still going round. That's all that matters. Boots crosses the start-finish line, so you can get how far ahead he is of, of Igon, who's in second. But that doesn't... It's not a story of dominance. It's not a story of uh, one man winning over somebody else. And um, Igon... He's trying to hold off Crag. This is your second place man, you know, Igon from France. Pink and yellow. Uh, and the Elliott Boots watch. He's still going round. A couple of seconds behind him is Neil Crag. And a few seconds behind him is Darren Bloomfield. He'll be happy with fourth for the 12th start. I got quite excited there. So Igon. You know, I'm pretty certain it's going to be a chuff bunnock if he does get the runner-up spot. But not enough as pleased as Elliot Boots is going to be. That's for sure. All right, gone. Let's just drop back to... Oh, you're with Craig, aren't you? Pick up six. That's with Craig. Let's pick up Craig who's going over the uh, X-ray switchback now. He's going to come dropping down the U in the six car. So we've got two and a half minutes to go. So we'll just take Craig around this lap and then we'll go and see the man who may well be our European champion, our, our repeat European champion, our double European champion. Just letting him relax without the camera on him at the moment in case something terrible happens. So Neil Craig. In third, podium, beckoning for the Northern England up. Getting a little bit close to Igon, I think. Might still be a possible there's at one extra lap. That might have been a, uh, something worth watching. No, he's just made a complete holix of uh, getting around that corner, so probably not. So we now enter the last two minutes. So let's see if we can find our champion elect. He's just going up the patio now. It is Elliot Boots over the ripples and coming down. So he's got this lap and a couple more. Now, if he's clever, he'll go a little bit slower. And he will, in fact, yeah, he's, he's got two laps. If he doesn't push it. He's got two laps to be European champion. And... Uh, We've got a couple of laps to go. Two. Okay, so down to a lap and a half for Elliot Boots. Absolutely remarkable. Looks like Boots is going to take this and be a back 
to back European champion. To finish first, first you must finish. It's the oldest adage in motor racing. It's attributed to all sorts of people. It's attributed to Ron Dennis. It's attributed to Mario Andretti. It probably was first said by some club racer named Derek. But it's absolutely true. You can be as fast as you like. Take Toyota in the Le Mans 24 hour. They were going to win, but they didn't finish. Three minutes and then it stopped. You must finish to win. Ron Felk hasn't finished. Bataille hasn't finished. The man who is going to finish, if he can do the next few corners, is Elliot Boots. And Elliot Boots will become the European champion. He just needs to go round these few corners. He just needs, it looks very much like we have, it looks very much like we have a, a victory for him. And, and, uh, yeah, and he can't, can't, two corners to go. Boots, got Boots is champion. Boots takes it. Wow, what an amazing performance from Elliot Boots. That is remarkable. What can you say? That's a fantastic performance by Elliot Boots. I'm going to go and try and talk to him. So we're now on and Boots has the trophy again. A second trophy for Elliot Boots. A surprise trophy for Elliot Boots. Fellow podium man, Neil Cragg. Elliot. Yeah! Fellow Coyote Show team are quite chuffed. Oh, sorry, probably for language. So let's uh, see if I go a quick word with uh, a very emotional Elliot Boots. You see the, uh, you can see it out there, like Chris, because you're blocking the camera, mate. <laughs> Elliot, um, well, that all changed in one minute, right in the middle of the race. You were running a consistent third, couldn't get the quite speed, and suddenly you won. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of a bit shocked as you are, to be honest. Um, I guess they had problems. Um, I mean, I was slowly trying to catch them. Um, I might have been pulling in a few attempts by that, but not a great deal. Um, I was relying on them, trying to make mistakes. Um, unfortunately, they had problems, which is a shame for them. Um, but obviously, everything's got to come together to win these events. So we know all about it. Um, so yeah, all in all, we've done it again. I'm so happy. What was, what was the reason why you were dropping away to begin with? Because you just didn't seem to have that same pace you had during qualifying. 